It is July 5th, and that means it's time to try new things. Season 3 came out, and um, we're gonna be creating some cool CGI. Oh my god, bro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What we're going to be doing is opening Blender first. Wow, this is my first time opening Blender on this channel. That's crazy. So this is gonna pop up, do not fret. If you drag around this, this is going to rotate it, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then right here we have our zooming in and out. So just like drag on it and then zoom in and out. And then the hand tool goes up and down. So yeah, and then this is the 3D camera button. But what we're going to be doing is importing our own 3D model because we're going to have some more in-depth Blender tutorials. But to find a 3D model, what we're going to be using is Sketchfab. That's what I use. So just search up Sketchfab. And then I just searched up Squid Game. And then once you scroll down, there should be some options. Shout out to Vector Studios. I'm going to be using yours. Love you. And then you just press download. And then I'm going to be doing the Blender option. All you have to do, since it's a Blender file, just press file and then open and then Squid Game. And then you're going to press open. Now, all of this popped up since, you know, this is their project file or whatever. So don't worry about this. Just like drag down on this. What I'm gonna do first is zoom out because yeah, but you know, it does look like a little complicated for some of you, of course. If we change like the render like viewport, um, we can like see how it looks shaded. This is what it looks like shaded. And then if I go to the like max one, it'll show me like fully rendered version. I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm on a MacBook Air and I don't want my MacBook to explode. So basically first thing I'm gonna do is go to my camera and you know, I'm seeing what this looks like, but if we go down here, we can see all the little controls and I'm actually going to drag this up some so you can like see all of them. What we're going to do is click our camera. Since this 3D model has a camera, I don't even have to add one, but if you want to add one, all I have to do is go up here, add, and then it's going to be camera right there. And then to move it around, all you have to do is press camera, click this orange object button, and then you can move the location of it. First of all, I want this to be positioned in front of the door. So what I'm going to do is move it. So I'm going to back out some. All you have to do is drag on the positioning and then I'm going to change the rotation. Hold on, not that one. Control Z to undo. I'm going to change the position of Z. So Z rotation and then I'm going to position this over here. And then after that, what I can do is change the Y rotation. Well, position transform, you know, but yeah, um, we're going to be messing around with these. But what I want to do is change the settings on my camera. So I'm going to click this arrow right here and then I'm going to press my camera button and then I'm going to go under the camera setting, which is going to be my data. And then what I'm going to do is change the focal length. And what this does, if the focal length is smaller, it's going to be like more, you know, narrow, the bigger the focal length, the more closer it's going to look. And then the smaller the focal length the more wide it's going to look. So if you want a wide shot, do a smaller focal length. If you want something more close, do a bigger focal length. So I'm going to keep it at like 11 mil yeah, millimeters. And then what I'm going to do is go back to my object mode, whatever. I'm going to zoom this back in. And then what we're going to do is go to our animation mode, which is up here. And then click my camera. As you can see, we have something similar to After Effects with our little timeline. Anyways, we should be at the beginning. So click this little white dot. This is animate property. Click it and then you've made a keyframe. Go towards the end, wherever you want it to end. I don't want too many frames because uh, Blender takes a little while to render, but it's okay. But what we're going to do then is zoom this out however far you need, period. So I'm going to stop right here, right there. Now, you're not done yet. What you have to do, don't forget to do this. I made this mistake one time and I did not set a keyframe, but all you have to do is click the keyframe button again. And then once you play this back, you should get some movement. What I'm going to do is highlight these keyframes right here and move them a little closer. But then I'm going to go forward a few more frames and then I'm going to zoom right back in and then I'm going to make a keyframe. You know, I want to add some rotation low key. So I'm going to make a Y rotation thing. So make sure you're in the middle or wherever this keyframe is. Click the little dot, go forward a few frames, and then we're going to do like a full 360. 360 and then click the keyframe again. Now, once you play this back, it should look something like this. Period. And now we get to the little keyframing of it. What you're going to do is highlight all of these. 
and then you're gonna right click one of them just like after effects and then you're gonna press interpolation mode no, don't even have to press it just go over it and then you're gonna click on bezier and this like smooths out everything it low-key looks the same though so we're gonna do a custom graph so to get to our graph editor we're gonna press this like button in the corner press it and then we're gonna go over to this like spot right here under animation and we're gonna click graph editor and then this is gonna pop up please do not freak out please do not freak out if you need to you can scroll this up a little and then if we go right over here we can see some of our graph and now what we have to do is edit these so we kind of want like a mid graph so we're gonna do something like after effects would so just like after effects guys just like after effects if you use after effects you know what i'm talking about boom all you have to do is edit this graph as well and then what we have to do is find our rotating graph i don't know where that is but we're gonna find it okay our rotating graph is right here actually it's very small so we're gonna focus on our scale graph it's gonna zoom in like right here remember this point 100 frames the graph is starting to get faster at this point now if we go to our rotating graph what we have to do is match this point and i think it's like pretty matched up yeah that looks about right so i'm gonna play it back to check real quick i kind of like it like that if we want we can speed this up just a little bit make it a little tighter but yeah not too shabby not too shabby we can animate the focal length if we wanted to so if we want to make a keyframe and then go for it a few frames and then like zoom in some i guess you can do that as well but yeah just edit the graph and yeah what i'm gonna do is go back to layout if you want pull this back up and then you can see the animation again period before i you know go over export settings and render it you can actually add text if you want all you have to do is press add and then text and then you have to find your text somewhere where is it oh text is right there move the location of it like upwards if you have to move it up move it up and then i'm gonna move this down some and then what i'm gonna do is rotate it like this and then to edit the text just press tab and then you can put whatever you want so i'm gonna do my name and then if you go to data text or whatever you can change the font go under here and then you can find the file of a font that you like let's see i'm just gonna do brunson all right and then what we can do is press tab again to get out of edit mode there we go and then after that what we can do is position this wherever we want but if i go back to the camera i can actually like see where this text is at and then i can um, move it from there if i want so i can like put it right here and then change the rotation of it hold on and then position this over here and then also if i want i can add like the lyrics of a song and as it's like going through you can like do the little graphs or whatever like that's a pretty cool idea but i don't really feel like doing that but then after this i'm basically done if i go back to my rendered view what i can do is edit the text some more if i want i can change the color i can change the geometry of it like make it 3d if i want to just increase the extrude Ooh, that would be cool if it could like go through the like middle of this oh okay um i'm gonna save this for a different video because to change the like color and stuff of it just go under material and then you can add a material i'm gonna do like should i do gold that's low-key tough and then if i change like metallic it'll be more shiny if we go under our preview we can see what it would look like and then if i lower the brightness it'll be like more you know but yeah i think this is pretty cool i'm gonna move it like probably up here just because okay then put it like that and then once i play it back it should do something like that period that looks good now for the rendering part first of all you want to see where your animation ends it ends around 190 frames first we're going to go to output and then we're going to change this frame range to wherever it ends so for me it'll be 190 and then we're going to choose our format you can do pictures but i like to do video and to do mp4 format just click this and then you can click on encoding under here and then you're going to change the container to mpeg4 and then after that you can save it where you want to save click the folder put it wherever you want it to go and then press accept 
and then after that what we're gonna do is change the frame rate i like to do 30 frames per second and then of course you can change the resolution to like 4k or whatever but i'm gonna keep it at these numbers because again i'm on a macbook air but then i'm gonna go under render and if you want you can change this to cycles but i'm gonna keep it at eve because cycles i suggest doing if you have like a good computer or whatever but yeah i really don't also i'm gonna add another light because this one is a little too dark so i'm going to add a light and then i'm going to go to this and then i'm going to change the position of it real quick hold on and then if i click it i'm going to change the power to a higher value and then i'm going to edit the radius because i want my text to be lit up and then you can change the color if you want but i'm not doing all that Ooh, should we do spot low-key spotlight would be tough okay i changed it to spot but what i'm gonna do is reposition this over like here hold on ah that looks cool okay and then go under here change the power of it and then i'm gonna change the size and then of course blend it so and then yeah Ooh, if i like animate the light that'll be cool okay hold up i'm thinking hard guys okay hold up okay i'm done animating for real okay anyways after that what we're gonna do is go back to render or whatever and if you want you can turn on motion blur i suggest doing motion blur I'm going to click my camera and then I'm going to go to my camera and then enable depth of field. And then I can actually change the focal distance to whatever I want. I suggest doing like, I don't know, but I'm going to change the F stop as well. So then we get that blurriness and I'm going to change the object to, I could do my text, but I don't know. Oh, that looks so cool. I'm just going to leave it on something else. Yeah, that should be okay. After that, all I have to do is press render and then we press render animation and then we wait. All right, guys. So last part of this tutorial, all we have to do is open After Effects and we're done with Blender, thankfully. Um, bye. We're gonna press new project, new composition from footage, press open. And then what we're gonna do is play this back. It looks pretty good, pretty decent, period. With this text, I really don't have like an audio to do text with. So I'm just gonna like do something random. So I'm gonna do something like edited. And then what I'm gonna do is double click this and change the color. I'm gonna have to say edited by Jaden FX, I think, yeah. So then I'm going to do another text. I'm just going to duplicate this one, pressing Control D or Command D, and then press buy, and then position this under here. And then, yeah, what I'm going to do is make a new camera. So layer, new camera. And then I think these settings are pretty decent. I'm going to make these 3D. I'm going to position this like back here, actually. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going to make it follow the 3D camera movement, if that makes sense. So first thing I'm going to do is like rotate this, but yeah, make sure both text layers are 3D or all your text layers. And then what we're going to do is edit this to our liking. So it's going to start like right here. And then what I'm going to do is press P, click the stopwatch, and then I'm just going to go towards the end. And then I'm going to zoom all the way out like this. And then I can move this like however I want, but I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to leave that right there. And then what I'm gonna do is double click this and make sure enable depth of field is enabled. I'm going to increase the aperture up just a little bit because yeah. And then it gives us like some blur. What I'm gonna do after that is find the point where it like zooms out the most. And it's about like right here. So wherever the most motion blur is. And then I'm actually gonna turn on motion blur. Boom, boom. I'm gonna easy ease all these. Right click one of them and then press keyframe assistant and easy ease. And then what I'm gonna do is do a speed graph. So I'm gonna change this to speed graph. Do a graph like this. Hold on. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm actually going to position these both a little more down. That should be better. And then once I play this back, it should look something like this. Yeah, period. And then basically what we're gonna do after that is match the other keyframes with the other camera movements. I'm not gonna do that right now, but what I will do is cut this off and then I can like add some text animations to this. I'm gonna add opacity flickering. After that, I'm gonna have this fade out really quickly. Hold on, delete these. And then I'm actually gonna move these forward. And then I'm gonna 
put this to zero if you want you could add some panning to all of this so then you know you get like a camera movement look i'm going to use s underscore shake and then after that i'm going to add a new solid layer so new solid and then i'm going to make it black which it already is press ok and then i'm going to add some cc draws and what this is going to do is give us like a cinematic looking edit thing change the height and then it's going to go from zero to 100 press u and then do a little graph you can do something like this not too tight but not too you know loose and then we can have it come back and period and then just do like a little graph like this thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video first video with blender um i'm trying to use it more in other tutorials we're just gonna see how this video does first i love you so much and i will see you in the next video stay safe and love you lots okay love you bye 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 you okay bye